Good morning. How are you? Hi there, studio. Miss Southern Belle and Coin Girl, thank you for joining me. Well, today um, we can talk a little later about anything, but right now the first part of it is about potty pan squash. And has anybody ever grown it? Because I, hi, Drop. Good morning. Has ever anybody ever tasted it, grown it? Because I have grown it this year. I, I did a video on it. Plus, um, <clears throat> mine are white, not yellow. So... But, and I just made a recipe with it, uh, which turned out pretty good with garlic and onions and stuff like that, because I've never had it before. So I just thought I'd talk about potty pan squash and wondering if any of you know what it is. Have you ever, that's what it looks like, but they, mine are in white. And have you ever had it before? And uh, there's different pictures of it and different recipes that I thought were kind of cool. So that's what I'm going to start on next is the kind of the pictures here to show you. Oh, but it wasn't bad. It's very light tasting. It's not a, uh, I was expecting it might be some squash have a really strong taste and it doesn't. It has a very light taste and very, very light taste. I don't know. It's like, like zucchini, but it has a stronger taste, it, it, stronger taste than a zucchini because zucchini kind of has a really uh, light taste. Now, if I did, it was baby food. My mom forced me. <laughs> it's really actually quite good. Honestly, I, wait till you see the images that maybe this will make you hungry but um i i was a little afraid to try because i you know it's hard trying new things but it wasn't it was good actually and that's what i want to show you some pictures mine is white so this is one of the pictures but they stuffed it so it's all edible it looks like they this one they kind of stuffed and baked with the stuff it looks really good well I'll show you this mine's white they look cool and the design you can do with them that's what i thought was really cool too so here's the first one you're gonna say uh right there and like i said mine is a white one but uh you let it go a little bit bigger and then you can actually stuff it and then bake it um there's just different ideas to do with it it's um just amazing amazing and i'll tell you the nutritional factors in a minute i'm just gonna pull my pictures up to show you all right let's see if i can get some more pictures up here Uh, what do we got? I, I, I did a lot. Isn't it cool? No, it looks really, it's really decorative, but it's all edible. The whole thing is edible. I ate the whole thing, but I sliced it up and fried it up and it did something different with it. Uh, this is like, mine looks like this. I got a picture of what mine looks like. Um, I'll shut that one off. This is what they look like when they're growing. Only that one's growing down. Mine, mine grew up. It grows up like a scallop. And it turns green, then kind of white, the kind I have. Um, they're really cool. And it's kind of like you can do dips and everything in it uh, and then eat the whole bowl. And uh, like I said, I'll get into a couple minutes the nutritional factor in it. Let me see. Just trying to find. Uh, these are so, they're so cute too. They're, I think they're the cutest looking squash I've ever seen. I mean, seriously, look at how cute this is. They're like little scallop flying saucers. All right. Thank you for the thumbs up, guys. I appreciate that. Um, all right, and then you can, this is what uh, Mike, when he told me he had them before, this is what he did. It, it, actually, this one's with the dipping sauce, and you can fry them. I knew I knew it was an unusual squash. That's why I thought, I'm going to show this again. I, I have a video. I'm going to put the link how to grow them. But uh, they're kind of cool. I mean, and they don't taste too bad. They're very light tasting. And depending on how you cook them, uh, they, they're pretty good. So I did mine. I kind of like sliced them sideways like that. Then I kind of like, I had butter and olive oil and I cooked that. Then I, I cooked some onions, normal onions in it, like a, a yellow onion. Then I took out those and I fried them up. I took the onions out, fried them up some more on both sides, took that out, fried a purple onion with it, which is a sweeter onion. I took that out and then I put it all back in. Hi, vegan, good morning. Put it all back in and um, added fresh garlic that I grew. So. I had my onions from the garden and I had my garlic from the garden and a little bit of uh, seasoned salt and some pepper 
and no complaints when I fed it. It looked kind of cool, and it, and uh, everybody thought it tasted delicious. So that's what I'll say on this uh, cool-looking vegetable. Good morning, Passion. I didn't feel very well, so that's why I didn't come on yesterday. I stayed off the air, Passion, because my stomach was still bugging me. So that's why I'm doing it this morning, the patty pan squash today. Uh, and just showing you cool ideas. Um, look at that. This. See, this is another one. When they're little, they taste better little, okay? So if you go too big, then they, they start to seed. And, and you're not going to like it. But you keep them like a, a small to medium size. Hey, MT. Good morning. Good morning, Howie. Have you uh, grown up? You probably have. How will you grow everything? Have you grown a potty pan squash before, Howie? And good morning. All right, I'm just trying to pick up some pictures because people, I wasn't aware of it until uh, I ordered the seeds. I think it was this year that I didn't know anything about potty pan squash. I figure you did. You probably, you grow everything. I never knew about them until this, the beginning of the year, and I ordered seeds. And I couldn't get them that easy. They came from Poland, actually, my seeds. And uh, now I'm showing you. I made a recipe with them yesterday, and they, they were really good. They were a nice side dish. But I think I might stuff them the next time when I work with them. I have the white ones. I don't have the yellow ones. Many times. Um, did you stuff them? They're really cool. I'm just showing. People are not aware of this patty pan. A lot of people didn't know, just like me. So I'm kind of showing them and what you can do with them. Um because some people didn't even know they just thought you could fry them and I'm showing there's tons of ways what you can do and next time I want to actually stuff them and bake them I think that's what I want to do next um, let's see and this is kind of what they look like when they're growing the female one and the male one plant so this is what mine are white though I'm not sure why I got white and not yellow but it is what it is the seeds are white So let me grab something else. I'm just trying to get my pictures all through here and get, uh, talk about the nutritional factor of them too. Of course, if you don't put anything with them, they're low in calories too. Um, here's another way of doing it. You just slice it up and you bake them like that. The flour is nice stuff too, yeah? You know, I know that most of them, all squashes, you can eat the flowers. I have never had it yet. I never eat the flowers, so I can't comment on that. But I know you can bake them and everything. Uh, and I, I heard, I think Kathleen had did it and found it pretty tasty too. So if you take them at the right time, you can stuff the flowers. And that's with a lot of squash. A lot of squash, the flowers are all edible. Here's another one they did. some other things in here all right well anyways good morning i hope you have a fantastic day or had so far because i'm running late but i just got up later and now there's, there they put like it looks like cheesy rice and spinach recipe this one kind of cool <laughs> Thanks, Howie. Um, that looks cool, right? Don't these look good? Sonia, hi, honey. I'm supposed to make you hungry. I want you to grow this kind of, of uh, squash. You might enjoy it. I think it's the coolest thing. And it grows like in uh, bushes, not like you can't, it doesn't, you can't make it into a climber. I thought you could. I didn't know a lot about it, but you can't. They grow in bushes. I've picked... Uh, Four so far. I have another one I'm trying to save for seeds, but I have them growing. They go like crazy. They grow really nice. It's a nice plant to grow, and it looks like it, it, it takes a lot of space, but it grows a lot of them. I just woke up, Nana, to let the chickens coop. Ch the chickens out, yeah? I'd love to have chickens. 
I can't, but I, I that is one thing I would like to have is chickens. Um, but I'm not allowed to have them around here, but I would love it. Wow, crab cakes, yum. Yum, Howie, you're quite the cook. There we go. That looks cool too, right? Um, that's what I, I think I would like to do is I would like to, to cut them open, clean them out, and then bake stuff inside. Hey, good morning, Eric. You do? Well, you try ordering this one. This is a cool one, but this one came, I could not get it locally. I should have been able to get the seeds in the States, but I couldn't. Mine came from Poland, believe it or not, but they're growing really well. Um, yeah, I wish we could, wish we could have chickens yet, but not allowed inside. Yeah, me, me too. Uh, passion. I wish I could have chickens too. I would, I would enjoy that. I mean, so would my dog probably chase the chickens and stress them out, but um, it would be cool to have chickens. I think I would. I would have, if I have uh, a better place, I would have it. These are really, yeah, they're um, cool. They were, I'm really impressed with them. Oh, okay. I'm really impressed with how they're turning out. Um, I had took a picture. It was for my update for when I do my uh, whole garden, but let me show you mine. I think I, I oh, I, did, I didn't take it off the camera yet. Um, I, I might take it off the camera and show you what I'm talking about because these are mine that I grew. So you guys talk amongst each other and i got to grab my camera and then I'll uh, show you the picture. taking updates to my stuff because then you kind of see how it's growing from when I started to how big it is now um, let's see there they are great try and take the best picture show you there it is um, paste. If I drop it. There it is. Okay. Um, I just want to label it so I can find it better. These are ones I didn't. I took out not that long ago. These are mine, and I just I didn't like. There was three of us. I was cooking for the three of us, and four is way too many. So I left two for another day uh, for this potted band squash. But this is when I just after I picked them out of the garden. Um, that's my squash right there. No, nah, they're not actually bite size at all. No, they're pretty. These ones are pretty nice size. They're not. Um, no, they they might look like they're size like tiny, but they're not. They're actually, I don't know. I mean, I guess it, individually it'd be perfect for for one person, one of them. Yeah. Oh, hey, Dave. Good morning. Good morning, Dave. We're just talking about potty pan squash. Have you ever had potty pan squash before? <laughs> a snack, yeah. They're good though. You gotta, you gotta try them. You might like to grow them. They're kind of so unusual. They look cool though. Another thing is, I want to show you. Um, well, I'm gonna just add that this is my mine, so that anybody comes back and looks at this. This is uh, the ones I grew personally.
they're cool to grow. You should give it a shot maybe next year. You guys might like this. Um, I have, like I said, I better put my link down there, but um, they're really fun to grow. Like, they're not that easy. They take a bit of space because they're bushes, but um, I grew them all together, and somebody had said that I might have room, or, or I put them too close together, but actually I didn't. They worked out great. The way, if you look at the video where I think I put them, show you the, the good morning, bud, where they are in the ground in my behind my fence, um, they all went big, but they're all happy with each other. They're all like kind of together like a big bush, and they're growing really well. Um, and this is a net, okay, I got the nutritional, but it was the pictures. I wanted to show you um, an image of it, it, what they do with it, but they put a dip in it. It looks really cool. Images. It was really cool because they didn't. This when they do a dip, they you could eat it raw. You don't potty pan is really soft as long as you don't grow it too big, and um, you can eat it raw. But they use it. Look at they use it for soup bowls. I mean, I didn't give you half the pictures. I could show you how cool this is. And you can put it in a salad and eat it raw. Um, oh, they even made pancakes with it. I was trying to show you how cool it looks. It's a dipping sauce. They use the container and put dip in it. Um, I don't can't find one now. I saw it earlier. It was so cute. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Meat stuffed patty pants, squash, sunburn. Oh, well, look at they're even putting some stuff all together. They, it's amazing what you can do with this stuff. Really, they got tons of recipes online here to, to help you out if you, you you don't know what to do with them. Um, I'm still looking. Anyways, I can't find a picture, but they they oh, they they cleared it out the insides and then they stuffed it with dipping sauce, and then you have like you know vegetables around it, so a vegetable dip. Dip all your vegetables in it, and then you eat the whole dipping bowl because it's all edible, which I thought was really cool. I just can't find a picture of it. So I'm going to say, let me see. The nutritional factors on this is patty pan is a good source of magnesium, niacin, and vitamin A and C. One cup contains approximately 20 to 30 calories and no fat. It is often sliced, coated, and fried until golden brown. Uh, Patty pan squash is a variety of summer squash, notable for its small size, round and shallow shape, and scallop edges somewhat resembling a small toy top or flying saucer. The name patty pan derives from a pan for baking a patty. Um, let's see what else they got. It's very low in calories if you, as long as you don't like fry it. Uh, I want to see if they have more than one variety. Okay, patty pan squash, also known as scallop squash, is a variety of summer squashes originated from Mexico. Scallop squash generally picked up while they are young, immature, and tender at a stage. They are sweeter and more appetizing. Native Americans have long been aware of the scallop squash cultivation since centuries. Botanically, they belong to the cucur... Botticus, C-U-C-U-R-B-I-T-A-C-E-A-E, -E, or ground, gourd, sorry, or gourd family of vegetables and closely related to other summer squash varieties, such as zucchini, crookneck squash. Um, what else? I just want to put a little bit of notations here. Uh, potty pan squash is rapidly growing half shrubby plant. It prefers organic, well-drained, sandy soils for best growth. After 35 to 45 days of plantation, yellow flowers appear, which soon develop into attractive, flattened disc-like fruit pods with scallop shell-like undulating edges. Patty pan squash comes in white, yellow, and deep green colors. Usually younger, tender fruit picked in their early stages for best quality fruit and cooking. 
if left to grow potty pants squash soon enlarges in size its outer peel becomes tougher and seeds turn harder and inedible use protective gloves and a knife i while harvesting to avoid contact with prickly stems and you know what i didn't use a knife at all you know how i take it's just telling you i never use a knife to take my stuff off i actually go into the the, the fruit we'll call it or vegetable pull my hand in to the top of it and twist i never use a knife or anything like that i just go in twist it slowly twist it off the the stem it doesn't break the stem it breaks the fruit off and there's no damage that's how it works best for me i don't ever use a knife on any of my stuff normally or scissors or not normally and it seems to be fine and it doesn't hurt the plant the way i do it um Miss Southern Bell's eating cheese, which is cool. So I don't know if it interests you guys, but I think it's something to try if you haven't tried this in your garden to grow. Um, what has it got? It's got some healthy benefits. Uh, just like other summer variety squash types, scallop squash too, is one of the very low calorie vegetables. 100 grams of raw fruit carry just 18 calories. It contains no saturated fats or cholesterol. Its peel is a good source of dietary fiber. Fresh patty pan fruits carry relatively more vitamin A than zucchini, provided about 217 IU per 100 grams. Golden yellow skin's scalp is good source of flavored poly, uh, polyphenolic, phenolic, I'm sure how are you pronounce this better than me, antioxidants such as carotenes, lutein, zeathin, zeathin, something like that. These components help scavenge Harmful um, oxygen-derived free radicals, reactive oxygen species, ROS, from the body that play a role in aging and various disease process. Patty pan squash holds relatively more amount of folates, pyro, pyridoxine, niacin, than zucchini. It provides 30 UG or 7.5 of RDA per 100 grams. Folate is a necessary element for cell division and DNA synthesis. Sin synthesis synthesis like wow when taken adequately during early pregnancy it may help prevent neural tube defects in the fetus look at see how that's pretty cool this stuff that the, the this potty band squash which i had knew, no idea what it was about so it's a very healthy it's one of the healthiest squashes Further, potty pan squash carry modest levels of b complex groups of vitamins like thiamine pyridine pyridoxine, riboflavin, and minerals like calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, and zinc. Um, it, yeah, it lists the whole thing of all the stuff that it contains. It's quite a bit. Yeah, it's quite a bit, a healthy one. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, it's, um, it's quite healthy of all the, the, the squashes. Like if I did a comparison... It's kind of cool that it's better than zucchini and all that. That's what it's saying. So it's kind of cool. Um, I'm going to show you some more pictures because I think, what did I say? Pictures is a thousand words, you know? So look at, um, I don't know. Look at how cool that is. And it looks like this one was roasted. Yeah, I'm making you hungry, but it is 11 o'clock for me, so it's in the afternoon. But I now that, how, it looks like, um, I don't know if that's black beans or whatever it is, corn and rice and, uh, that's a pretty healthy meal right there. Like one per, you, you, what, like I'm imagining having company over. That looks so pretty in a dish too. I mean, the way it looks and everyone gets one, um, you know, one potty pan squash per person. It's probably, it's a lot. It's like a meal in itself if you wanted to stuff it. Yeah, I think those are cute. What does that got? Ground beef, maybe peas. Hello, Ken. Welcome to my live stream. Ken, maple, Ken's Maple Leaf Forge and stuff. Hello. Welcome. Good morning. We are talking about potty pan. There it is. I have. I don't know where to get the yellow one. I, I guess I wouldn't mind growing the yellow one, but I don't have that. That looks good. Um, it is. I. Th this is called potty pan squash, and a lot of people, I did not know it. 
it was like actually Mike, I think, made me aware of it or some. I don't know where I saw it. If it was Mike or somebody said potty pan squash. I said, you know, I never heard of it. I've never tried it. I got to get the seeds and grow it. And so I did. And um, that's these are mine right here. I have right. Let's see. Those are my potty pan squash right here. Um, yeah, that would be. Yeah, it looks good though. Drop. I'm just saying that. Um, I just think they, they look adorable. They look real, honestly, in real life, they're so cute. And I would just either slice it in half and peel the bottom off and have a lid, or you can just stuff it without the lid. But nonetheless, it's like, it, it's so cute and it's like decorative and um, it doesn't have a strong taste. So if you put a lot of herbs or whatever, it's going to pick up the taste just like, like zucchini. Zucchini is not a strong taste. This has a little bit of a taste. It's a little stronger than zucchini, but not much um, stronger. Because my family, when I went, I was the same. I was a little leery. Would I like it? Would I not like it? And when I tried it, um, it was pretty good. I wasn't expecting to actually like it. See, like that. See, that would be really cute. Um... Um, I guess, but yeah, you could do that. If you're probably right, but I don't know if I would. I, well, I know peanut oil is, would you say peanut oil is a little healthier than other oils, but, um, I don't know if you try to lose weight or something, I wouldn't put, put tons of oil, but I mean, you probably could, you probably could deep fry it. I, I don't see why it would probably taste nice. I mean, what, honestly, what doesn't taste nice in a deep fryer? There's not too many things that don't taste nice. It's just all the saturated fats and of the oil and everything. But uh, most things, oh, my God, mo everything, uh, the, the tastier probably is the fattier content it is because it tastes better. Yeah, I would imagine drop that would taste probably good in a deep fryer. You're right. Probably really good. I like this idea, too. I think this looks cool. I think this looks like white rice or it could be... Um, Right rice with spinach and cheese, or it's uh, now I forgot the rice I've made it before. It, um, the, the Italian rice, you know, where you put you have to put add cream, you, you add um, cheese to it as you're boiling it. And well, I, I can't remember the name of it, but I've made it before. I made risotto that looks like a um, yeah, it looks like a risotto with spinach in it, a white rice spinach risotto. <laughs> You're going to see who die you see and eat it. That's hilarious. Even this one looks cool, too. Uh, it could be. Spinach risotto, yeah. I think that's what it is. I have made, you guys, whoever cooks probably has, have you all made risotto? Thanks, uh, Miss Southern Bell. I see you shared my out. Thank you so much. Have you ever made risotto before anybody? Razor here. You are definitely, I know you're listening and you shared me out. Thank you so much. This looks kind of cool too. This one here. Like to put it in, um, cause I love working with cast iron pans. So you put it in a cast iron pan stuff them a little bit i might do that one too that's actually kind of a cool recipe oh you're not a big fan of risotto i love risotto oh it, it has to be done right but risotto is delicious um hey david rice 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 he's so nice 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 good morning david rice um yeah that's that's maybe i'll do it that one next the next one i do i might do it like that i need one more though i only have three two I get one more. I'd like to, or I could slice them in half maybe and just stuff them half ways. That, I'd have plenty for a dinner. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing something like that for a dinner and then putting it all in the oven, stuff them, put them in the oven, um, like stuffed peppers and just let them cook in a cast iron pan, which for those of you who don't know, when you cook with a cast iron pan, you know you get iron from a pan, right? Like just so you know, it's a very healthy way to cook. So if you put a little bit of oil, put them on there, uh, stuff them, feed us all stuff them all and then put them in the oven and bake them uh it's it wouldn't be too much calories it tastes delicious 
Oh, uh, well, we have to get you cooking there, Miss Southern Belle. Me and you, I, I have to do something like that. That would be fun. It, it motivates me more to cook when I, I'm with somebody. <laughs> David, you're so funny. I don't have anything cooking now. Sorry, buddy. But I think that would be actually kind of a cool... I think I think I have that on mind to do that as a meal right there. Um, slice them in half and put a little bit of olive oil on the bottom of the pan and stuff them and put them in the oven and cook them. That would be a, quite a nice meal and I, with a salad or something like that. I could see me doing that. That would be... Maybe that's how I'm going to pick cook the next patty pan squash but anyways I'm um, sorry I'm making you guys hungry but I'm just telling you it's worth growing this and it feels good that I grew it they're mine like they're not from a store so it makes it even more tastier as far as I'm concerned there mine are the white ones and there's the yellow one they torture me <laughs> well then that's easy to torture you obviously like food <laughs> I'm going to bring some more. Since I've tortured you guys, I'm going to show you some stuff. Potty pan squash. Um, look at this. They made it into, um, like, you know, what's it called? Rotini, like the potato. A gratin. Baby patty pan squash rotini. Um, I, they have, like, amazing recipes you can do with these. It's like, wow. This is the one I think most people use, do. Um, I don't want to do it because cornmeal is not my favorite thing. But since uh, I'm going to make you hungry, I might as well go all out. And you guys, <laughs> I'm going to go all out and show you all kinds of stuff they do. Most of my squash gets a butter bath. Yeah, this is, um, let me see. This looks cool, too. You do, eh? All right. The only thing is, um, I was working on a cookbook, actually. Uh, but with all this virus went on, I had my friend, my daughter's friend's a photographer. She was coming over taking pictures, and I do still plan on doing a cookbook my own. But I want to make things simple for everybody. It's, my recipes are going to be really simple. I want people to use the book, not put it on a shelf. That's kind of what my, it, well, it was more meaning than that. But, um, but yeah, I know how to cook, and I wouldn't mind doing a cookbook. I'm working on it. See, did that's why I'm here. That's good. Right there. That's how they do it. I think Mike, uh, just Mike was talking about that's how he cooks it. But I don't particularly love cornmeal. But for those of you who like cornmeal, you can actually take this and slice it thin and uh, put cornmeal on it and then you fry it. I mean, but I'm not a big fan of cornmeal, so. But uh, I guess that's how a lot of people do it. Then you have... Oh, look at this. You can mix it with pasta, too. Exactly. Of course you could. I don't know why I didn't even think of that. You can mix it. Here's the one with pasta. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to make you guys love it so much that when you see this stuff, you know it's going to be worth growing because you can do amazing things with it. And if you want to lose weight, then just don't use high oils or fats with it and put less in it put everything healthy in it and you're not going to gain weight from it not really but it's also designed that look you can do this with it slice it up in pieces with pasta and make a pasta dinner or actually that that you know what else since you can have it raw you can actually have a vegetable um i'm trying to think like an italian dressing homemade italian dressing with feta cheese or greek greek dressing feta cheese uh pasta that's been, been cooked before toss it all up now you have a cool pasta dinner, and you have raw, um, very nutritional patty pan squash in it. It's amazing. Is it? It's amazing. I'm just telling you, it's worth growing this. Um, I don't know if I've ever... That looks like baby's eating in that dish. It, right there, you can see them. You can see the, the, the patty pan's all cut up. And it's just, it's entertaining. It's just a beautiful looking squash. Seriously, I, I'm going on and on about it, but I just, um, I really was very happy that I grew it. Now, if I can get seeds from it, um, I'm going to be very happy about it. But wait until you see, when you get the seeds, you have to make it grow really big. It's huge. It's like the size of a, one of those discs you throw in the air for dogs. Uh, that's how big. It's got to be really, really big to get the seeds from it. So I'm saving at least one. 
one or two of them to, to grow in the seeds and the rest I'm just going to constantly eat because it constantly is growing them. They should, you know, as long as they don't get any bugs because some of the squash get those stupid beetles and then they'll wreck your whole squash or it gets a fungus and it kills it off. What I've been really uh, diligently doing so I don't have that trouble is anything moist or wet, when the flowers dump off, okay, they get really wet. I pull that out and throw it out of there. I actually take any leaf that's starting to go bad, I pull it out of there. I pull everything out. I keep it clean because this way the chances are bugs won't get into it. And it, it's working so far. <laughs> You're welcome. I wouldn't want you to lose your appetite, bud. <laughs> oh, it's going to get better. Wait until you see this one. They made this into patty pan squash with sour cream sauce. So it looks like these... Oh, this is really good too. Sorry guys, but I'm gonna make you hungry. I'm gonna make you so hungry that you're gonna go. You want, you're gonna want to grow these things. That's my that's my uh, method to my madness. Oh, cool. Thank you, Miss Southern Mel. I will definitely do the shout out later. Good morning, doll. Susan's in the house. Oh, I bet. You know what? I didn't have I shared too much, but actually, do you think it'd be too late to grow it? I would like to do, I didn't do a video on Swiss chard because it didn't grow that great for me last year. But um, I am tempted to grow them. Do it again. I, I like to grow it until I at least do a video. And I didn't get a video of Swiss chard, but I did grow Swiss chard, the, the rainbow one. I, I, I tried growing the rainbow one, which is kind of really cool looking, actually. Um, that's for you, Drop. I grew the, There's different Swiss chard. And then there's the colored one, and I did the color one, the rainbow one last year. Um, Susan, we're just trying to, to get people to grow um, patty pan squash, so I'm making you guys hungry. Yeah, it's not too late. Yeah, so yeah, it's not too late to do it, is it? Drops. Good idea. Um, where's that lot? Uh, Mm, yummy, yummy in my tummy. Where is it? I just put another one up there. Just, oh, there it is. Here's another one. So if you can't find recipes for this, because I, you know, this is for me too, I did it. I went, like, when I started to grow this and I went, okay, I want to taste them. Am I going to like them? And then what can you do with them? And then I start looking up all these recipes and I went, oh my God, I, it gets me like to make my own recipes up. That's what it does. I'm going to make an, my own stuffing and stuff them and um, such cool stuff. Very cool recipes. Let's see. I don't know why I didn't get the yellow one, though. I'm still... Maybe next year I'm going to try to see if I can find the yellow one. I don't think there's a difference between yellow and, and white. But this is what mine looked like at first. And they say green. So actually, mine are green and turn white. I'm going to show you a picture of this. At least I'm trying to get it. Brought me to an area about... Uh, let's see. I don't know. They're, they're the cutest plant. I think of all the plants I ever... What a word to say cute, but it's true. Of all the things I've ever grown, I'm using the word cute for this. because I think they're adorable. Like, actually, it's funny. My my husband and my mom saw it and they said, oh, these are really cute. I said, it, it, he said, I said, you don't eat them, do you? I said, yeah, you eat them. You eat the whole thing, skin and all. Um, they're edible, but don't... When they get too big, like they, I've already said, they're not edible. They become turning into seeds, but... You gotta pick them small and soft, and they're really soft. I was expecting to take a knife and have to really cut it hard, and no, it's like a very soft flesh. The whole thing is soft. Take a, a knife and you just slice it, and it really slices quite easy, actually. Um, it, I neither did I, Susan. That's uh, so what. Uh, if you like them, Nana, I don't going to be a up choose today what if you like them nana i don't going to be what you're talking are you getting i don't know what that makes sense if you like them nana i don't oh if you like them i don't oh if i like them, i'm going to be up choose today oh okay you're good if i like them you're not gonna like them i got it all right you're on strike or something um oh yeah i gotta put that how to grow patty pan squash okay my link is here too. <coughs> put 
put that in there. Uh, you like being a brat. You like, you, you like your form of attention. You're like a little kid. I need my attention, and if I don't get it, I'm making sure I get it today. All right, let's see. Let's see, yeah, there it is. I'm touch my link here where I grew them. But uh, I th seriously, this is not a mistake to grow, guys. If you can get a hold of these seeds over here, folks. <laughs> Ah, you put it too, did you? I put it on the bottom here so that they, they just don't even have to watch the thing if they want to find the link is right in the front of it. For anybody that doesn't come to live stream. Some people don't come to live streams. They just watch videos. So kind of like a, either way. But thanks, Susan, for putting it there. Um, I appreciate it. But you guys are, honestly, it's, it's such a cute, versatile squash. I'm growing another squash too. I've already did a video and I grew spaghetti squash. I did a patty pan squash. I have a, uh, I'm growing butternut squash, and, and I and it I started that kind of late, but um, so I'm going to do a video on butternut squash. So I'll have like a every squash I'm going to at least try once. I'm super stoked on my, oh my god, my gourds. I'm telling you guys. Um, well, I don't even want to start on that. I'm on patty pan squash, but my gourd. I have. I'm so excited. I have one like it's. If I measured it, let me see. It's about. That's foot. Uh, I maybe it's a good foot it's a good foot long my gourd i'm so like excited i count it i go out there every day and count and see if i see new baby gourds going up there so i have about like i said five i've seen five that the main one is really big you can't miss it that one's like about at least a foot and a quarter well i'm trying maybe maybe i'm getting excited here maybe not quite a foot i don't know did you grow uh no i'd love to grow that dave i like to grow every single thing at least once um, I have no luck growing butternut squash here, and it's my favorite. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you how I do it. You're talking about the butternut? No, no, mine, it's not butternut. I, I'm going to try butternut. I didn't do that one. What did I say it? Ah, oh, I forgot the name of it. Um, let me see if I can find it, because I started filming it. It's not butternut. I'm, I think I'm saying it wrong. Hang on a minute. Um, buttercup. Yeah, butternut is the orange one. Um. It looks like a peanut to me, but it's buttercup I'm growing. Did you ever grow buttercup? I never heard of Hubbard squash either. See, this is, guys, I got to grow these. I'm having a blast at trying different things and tasting things. Um, you know, there's one that I had, that the pepper one. I didn't really like it, but I would grow it at least once to do a video on it. Um, this, I can tell you, is a keeper. I keep telling you, this is a good squash to grow. Spaghetti squash is a really nice one to grow. Um... Well, those are the main ones I've been growing, so I don't know. I have to work on other ones. This is a bit, it's a buttercup. It's not a butternut. It's a little baby one, buttercup squash. Have you had that drop before? A buttercup? It's like a little green one. And Hubbard squash is a cool one to grow too. I'd like to try that. Uh, I'm growing green and blue Hubbard. Yeah, you guys talked about that. I have to try to grow that one. Hubbard squash. I got to get some seeds for that. Um, I'm not going to, obviously, it's too late this year to do it, but I wouldn't mind growing that for next year. Yeah, did you like it? So, so anybody, so yes, I had, did, what do you think of that? Is that kind of a spicy squash, buttercup squash? We're talking about, um, since we're talking about different squashes, what the heck, it's okay. I already put all that stuff I wanted to talk about anyways. I gave you pictures of my, some in, nutritional factors. One of the healthiest ones seems, uh, yeah. Oh, it's a winter squash. Can I grow that now? I don't know if I have access to seeds, but can I start growing that now? Because it would be de dead by, like, I, my stuff start dying off. The, the frost comes in about uh, October. September, I'm safe, but October, I start getting frost. So that still would be kind of too late to start it, I think, right now in July. Even if I had, I think you, we talked about that and we saw pictures of it. Okay, this is, um, I... This is the main conversation I want to talk about, but right now I'm going to go and we're going to go get the pictures of Hubbard squash. I want to check that out again. I remember when we talked about it, you guys, I, I put a picture of it and it comes in two colors or something. Let's see. Um, so you like, 
you said, oh, oh, okay, yep. Let's see if I can find it. It's weird looking. Wow, they're big too. A uh, blue Hubbard. Um, it comes in a couple of colors, doesn't it? Because it, they got an orange one, and here's a. It's called a blue one. Let's see. It's a big too. Holy cow, it's big. Wow, is it big? Let's see. I'm gonna grab that out. Just uh, oh, wait a minute. Let's see if I can find it. They have the blue is called it looks like white to me, but it's called blue. All right, let's see what you can find it. It's pretty big. They she has her hand out here and showing you how big this sucker is. Wow, is that ever a big squash? I think I have seen it. I think we use it as decorations for Halloween. But we never I never tried the squash before. You would plant it the same time you plant pumpkins. Oh, well, I do. I I should have planted pumpkins a long time ago. You plant pumpkins lit earlier than this. It's too late for it. Uh, like right here, eh? All you need is one, and then hopefully the seeds will be vital to grow the next time. Uh, which were, I knew it worked with spaghetti squash. I got a spaghetti squash, and then I took it from a store and then took those seeds, and it, it, they grew. For some reason, though, they're not quite as strong as some of the seeds, but that's what we're talking about. Um, that's a, it's called a blue Hubbard squash. Then you have, um, in fact, this, this, does this look, oh, there's a, there's not a lot of meat, though. Look at the inside of this. It doesn't look like there's a lot of meat on these ones. I'm going to show you this picture. And it's showing you opened up, and it doesn't look that big. Um... In the inside, to me, there's not. It doesn't look like I call it a lot of meat in it. So they have the blue one, and the other one's orange looking. Let's see. Yeah, does that look familiar to you too, Susan? And um, drop is that what we're talking about, eh? The outside is very hard to cut. Yeah, but I don't, I see it's got a lot of um, inside to it. Like what I'm saying is it's just, it doesn't have a lot of meat. When you look at it, you just have that thin section inside of it. Yeah. Oh, you can roast the seeds too. Oh, is that right? Interesting. What else we got pictures of? Because they made, at most um, squashes, you can make soup with it. That's like a give. And there, this is what um, we're talking about. For, oh, my God. Look at the size of that. <gasps> oh, I can't show her. I don't want to show a woman's face on here. But that Hubbard squash is just huge. And, of course, we were talking about butternut, which I still haven't grown yet. I should grow this one. Maybe I'll, I, I've grown two. So I got buttercup squash, and I have the potty pan squash. So I can afford, I have enough room that I can grow about two squashes. So, oh my God, this is cool too. Look at what they did here with this, your um, Hubbard squash. Oh my gosh. It actually looks designed really cool. I mean, I've done a pumpkin soup before where you, you put everything in the, in the pumpkin. I've done that before, what I remember. Um, so they did the same thing, but in a Hubbard squash. It's cool. A lot of these squashes are a lot stronger tasting um, than this. The patty pan is not strong tasting squash, which if you don't like the taste of a really strong squash, it's kind of, I recommend it because it's way better. These squashes have a stronger taste. And it's okay if you like the taste of squash, but yeah. You only grow butternut? You, you got to open up your mind there. There's other things that are really cool, Ken, to grow. Seriously. You, you, I know, but that but people, like, you should. You should change it up. It's, like, keep what you got, but try something new. 
in your garden. You'd be surprised. You might end up liking it. I realize butternut might be something that, I mean, actually butternut squash freezes. You can do all kinds of stuff with butternut squash. I have. It's amazing. Hello, short bus. Welcome. It's amazing what you can do uh, with butternut squash, but the other squashes are kind of cool. I mean, who'd have guessed potty pan would be that good, but it, it, honestly, it's very good. I think it's versatile. I really like it. And I would grow it again, for sure. Now we got, we're just talking about, uh, here we go, butternut. As most people, that's the, the normal one people grow all the time. This is a, a give. I just, I should actually do a video and do one once on it. It's okay, I don't mind it. Um, it's the, the go-to before I knew about um, different squashes. Um, that's the go-to one I first used to have as a butternut squash until my favorite ended up being spaghetti squash and then now i would do probably patty pan again but i don't know if i'll do it next year because i i don't have enough room for all of the squash family to take up all my section because it's it's they grow too big uh, where is it oh that's why it's a, a download give me a second Need to find another one, another picture. Hmm. There it is. Um, where to go? Yeah, this is the this is the standard squash most people grow. Well, right here yeah can you get seeds from that drop can you do you have seeds they're huge so that would take up a lot of my garden to grow it but maybe I do it just once to see what it tastes like Now, I think Buttercup is the one I'm growing next, and I think it's got a spicy taste. I don't think it's going to be one I like, but I thought I'd grow it. Buttercup squash. This is what I'm going to show you what the one I'm growing right now. They're cute looking, but I think they're kind of spicy. I get that idea from them. So this is the next one, as long as I have enough time. They should come in. Oh, did you? Okay. Uh, let's see where the buttercup squash is. This is the one, they're really tiny plants. I just started the video on this. I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough time to, that it's going to go to full plant when I do the video. I don't think so, but this is what I'm heading for. That is a buttercup squash. Kind of cute looking, but I think it's spicy. So I'll have to tell you when I get it. You get a whole bunch of these potty pan squashes too. They just pop all over the side, and then I just take it and twist it. Um, but it, it pops at the top. If you need the tops, then you might have to trim it a little taller. So if you want to like do a fancy dish, then you're gonna cut it down more. But um, yeah, thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for listening. Twelve people here. Um, I knew this was going to be a pretty good subject because it is the things you can do and just get you on other. Uh... All right. I want to show you something. See if I can find um, how big it has to be to grow to seed. Let's see what it. I should see it. Nope. Doesn't. Um, images. Let 
They're really, really big, and I can't, I'm trying to show you, there's a picture to show you how to do it. They got to go extremely big to get them to see, ah, there's one. Oh, there it is. That's actually a good picture. It's a guy in it, but I saw the video. I thought it was cool. He was showing you where to find the seeds, and, and it, it, it's going to show you how big this is. That's why I want to bring it up. How long you have to let it grow. Go back to the potty pan squash screen. Hmm. how big that is I'm going to show you it has to go huge look at it I, I did this picture I don't like normally showing people's bodies or anything but I want to show you and compare to the guy's body look at how big that that is that's the size it has to grow really really big to get seeds from it hey Eve hello how are you doing hello good to see you Eve thank you for coming Actually, I might do a picture of me for, for later on when I get the seeds. I'll snap my own picture when I open it up to show you the size of it. You can see. And then you're going to pick them all up in the center and then just dry them out. Rinse them off really good under the water. Let them dry out and then store them till you're ready to grow them again. So I don't know how many seeds. I don't think it's too big of seeds, but that's why I need to grow about two. I'm doing fantastic. I'm I'm glad you're feeling better, Eve. It's uh, it's nice to hear. I didn't know. I thought you were doing better, but I'm glad you're feeling way better. Then, um, it's nice to see you, Eve, and thank you. And I'm doing fantastic. I have no problems. Just thought I'd do a live stream, and then I'm going out to the garden actually to check on my stuff. Um, and I just, you know, one of the the potty pans is exciting for me, and the other thing. Um, I don't know if I've shoved it in there yet. Let's see. I want to show you what I'm excited for, but I don't know if I... I took the picture. I thought I put it up here. This the one? Nope. I need to take another picture. I wanted to show you the gourd, how big it's getting. So maybe I'll do that today. Um, it's actually quite exciting. My gourds, I was so excited to grow them. And the, they're look, looking really cool. It's the 12th. 20th. Oh well, yeah, I got it. Yes. Okay, what's the number? Let's see. July 22. July 22. Let's see. All right, Can't, I'm excited to show you that. There's my gourd. <laughs> right there. I got others, but that's, see, you can see there's one right there, another one beside it. But that was taken July 20th. So it's, it's three days, so it's bigger than this. But um, that's my, like, it's like, like my pride and joy, my baby, that I was dying to, 
it's like having a new kid and you want to show what's what it looks like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy. Um, the whole thing is looking really good. Um, and I took that three days ago, so the 20th. And it has now five of them, but they're tiny. Like that one's the biggest one. Then I got one number two. Um, I got another picture. I don't know if it shows more of them, but um, like I said, it's even bigger than that. So it's, it's exciting for me as a gardener, growing something you never grew before and you were dying to grow it and try to get the seeds from it. Um, it is. It's exciting. It's like like, like I'm a new mama from, for gourds. Um, it's just so funny. But um, let's see if I got. I think I'll find the 20. Because there's a picture I took at the back of how. If you remember, I I'm gonna date when I do the update of my garden. You'll see from when I first started it, it had no leaves. To this is uh, dated the 20th, and I'm gonna have to take a picture because it changes. It's even way thicker than this. So you get an idea of the uh, the arch that I, we built for it. Um, all right, it's 2001. I just got to find the codes here. All right. I, I don't think you can see the gourds hanging, can you? But it is. It's it's hanging. Oh, yeah, you guess you can if you look hard enough. i got to look what you see. But that's my urch. Now, if you remember, it was on the bottom, and it was very small. The plants, four, I put four plants in, and the very first time you're more seeing the urch than you're seeing the plants. Now you can see how my um, gourd is doing, which is, like I said, it's exciting for me because I was dying to grow gourds, so. Hey, hello, artist. How you doing? And there's my hollyhock in front of that picture. So I, I have zinnias to the left, hollyhock to the right. There's a tomato plant in, on the right of that arch. Uh, zinnias on the left of that arch. In front of them is um, hollyhocks, uh, which I'm trying to wait to get the seeds for the hollyhocks. And underneath the arch is strawberries. So um, I didn't intend on making it look pretty, but it looks kind of nice from when people walk by. It kind of looks cool to the way it's designed. Um, and like I said, underneath I have strawberries growing under the arch. So when you can see in the picture, um, when I did the close-up, yeah. Right? Look, you remember when I showed you first when I there's a video on when I showed the arch. I did a video on it. I did a video on growing gourds. And this is what the final thing looks like together. Um is cool. And it's even bigger than that. So it, it, like the the um the vine is doing really good. But I must tell you that I take care of that. I go if I see a dead plant, because dead plant, dead dead leaves, not dead plant, but dead leaves Anything dead, you need to take it off. It attracts bugs. So, yeah, thanks, Susan. I love it. Um, anything. So I take off the flowers. When the, the male flowers die, I take them off. I take off any yellow leaves, anything where it's going bad. I do this to all my plants because if you sit there and leave it on, it attracts bugs. And then the bugs will get into your, your you're talking about beetles and all kinds of stuff will start eating your stuff. So it's worth going out there pulling all the dead leaves out of there any flowers that are moist and wet i pull them off of course i'm short so i can't get the top of that so on the very top you, i can't reach it i can't take the the um i think i can move that down let me see if i can move it down I'll show you there's flowers up top oops that's not what i want hmm? yeah up top there's flowers i can't reach it because it's very tall but uh 
otherwise that's my plant and to the far right that's where this gourd is I came up closer and took the picture to show you um, the gourds so and it and it, like I said every day gets bigger and bigger it looks really cool I'm really happy all right so let's go back to my main thing I was here for today was the patty pan squash there I'll put it back to over here um, See, he used clippers. I don't use clippers. However, that is a bigger pit, patty pan. But I normally turn it, and it works fine. You hold the fruit and just turn it off and twist it, and it's better um, than actually clipping because, I don't know, unless you want to put... Uh, I, I'm careful about that. I have used scissors, but I, I like to put alcohol on them or uh, peroxide. I clean up what I cut. You're going to put a disease back in the plant, I'm just telling you. If you use, when I turn it, I don't give any disease to it because I'm not even touching where I cut it. If you use cutters or scissors and you wonder why you end up with a virus or some kind of disease to your plant, it's because it got infected by the, the scissors and all that. So I don't, I try not to use scissors and I try not to use clippers to do any of the stuff because it's, I don't know, to me it's harmful for the plant unless you clean them off. And all those flowers right there that are dying off, I will pull that out of the way. There's too much moisture and it brings bugs. So like I said, so far it's worked good for me. Uh, taking all the moisture out of the plant and keeping it as dry as you can. Because te believe me, those leaves on this potty pan squash has a lot of water. It's like when you go to try to twist it, it's really a lot of water. Oh, hello, the pigeon lady. Yes, you can transfer spores to your plants. Just twist the fruit or veg off. There you go. Um, hello, we got the pigeons. Pigeon lady's been listening in the back. Hi, welcome. How are you, doll? So thank you. I got 15 watching, 19 thumbs up. Thank you very much uh, for all that. That's appreciated. Um, uh, so far, I hope you're enjoying the live stream because I am. I'm showing you a little bit about everything going on. For those of you, I can do a quick little survey. I just like this being my thumbnail considering I'm talking about potty pan squash. But we do, I pick a subject. I put that I've grown it. The link is down below on this live stream. Plus, um, I start getting into everything else. And another thing I can add to it is if anybody got pictures of how your garden's going. Well, thank you for popping in on your break. Hey, Mike, good morning. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Elvis! Smashing a like button. Yeehaw! Very cool. So it says 16 watching 21. Thumbs up. Thank you guys. Thank Ooh, -hoo, 22. Cool. Um, Mike, it was deli- Oh, we got Swampy Acres. Hello. Hello, Swampy Acres. Welcome. Mike, it turned out delicious. I did not do your recipe, um, but I did- I fried it with onions, two different ones. The yellow onions that I bought, the purple onions that I grew, the garlic that I grew um, with a little bit of oil, olive oil and butter, um, and it was delicious. A little bit of spices, some pepper, and I like using uh, Lori's season salt. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that, but I use that salt, and um, it, it turned out really good. All of us were a little leery to eat it at first, and it was nice and tender, and so that's how I did it. But we were talking about, since you guys are just joining me, I'll go over to the stuff that we were um there we go. So this is what the seeds look like. You have to get it really big, but let me show you. Apparently, I was making everybody hungry starting my live stream. So this is, if you grow it, um, I said the benefits are really good for it. It's one of, actually, it's better than a zucchini. It turned out really good, Mike. Honestly, um, I was impressed because I know that you like, I was talking about how you like, um, and I, I show a picture of this one. You like cornmeal on it, and but I look at these recipes so I'm going to do a stuffed one next, but let me show you. That's what I want to do next, Mike. I want to actually take, um, that one's a vegetarian dish that you could do, or you can turn it into, uh, if you're not a vegetarian, you can do one with meat. So I was showing all that stuff. Like you, you clean the inside out, then you would stuff it in it. I would probably put the lid in it and put it in the oven. So that's kind of what I want to do. Or there's other recipes. That's what it looks like. Mine is a, there's apparently a yellow, green, and a white. Mine are white, but they look green at first. I wish I had the yellow. The yellow looks really cool. I don't know why, but I have the white one. 
Yeah, wait till you, yeah, meat for you, meat for you, please. Look at the, it just uh, goes on and on the stuff. That's closer to, I grilled it, but I added onions with it and it was delicious. Um, let's see. I want to show you this one. There, like that. That's meat there, Mike. That's got, it looks like it got peas in it, some kind of meat. Um, so there's all kinds of recipes to do this amazing. And then the nutritional factor that I've already went over, sent you an email, Nana. They wanted to say hello. Oh, sent you an email, Nana. They wanted to say, oh, okay. Who wants to say hello? Okay, I'll go and find out what we're talking about. Um, I will look at my email in a minute. Uh, drop for sure. All right, so this one is more like, see, they got the yellow version, the green one. Do you, who has grown potty pan? Mike has. Mike's the one between Mike and me looking it up is why I ordered the seeds. The seeds I could, I thought I could get from the States. I got them from Poland, believe it or not. And it took a while and I was excited to grow these. And now I know why. I'm excited and I'd grow them again because I, they taste really delicious. They're very versatile. They're, they're healthier than a lot of squash or, um, yeah, I mean, the, the nutritional factor is one of the better ones for this particular in the squash family over zucchini and stuff like that. Um, it's just, it's an amazing thing. It looks good. Look at how cute that is. I was saying, airing it out and putting a dip in there and then the vegetables around it. Now you have the container, you eat the dip, and you eat the container. Like, it's a give, give. This thing is so versatile, this particular squash. And it looks so cute. It's one of the cute, like my, when my mom and the husband saw it, they went, oh, these are really cute. Can you eat that? And they didn't think you could eat it. They just thought it was cute. I said, no, you eat the whole skin and everything. And I, and Mike was the one we, I talked to a while back that he told me about, he's had it before. So has anybody ever had it? Okay, no problem, Susan. Thanks, honey. Take care. Thank you for joining me. Um, have a good one, honey. What is just Mike? You're so cheeky. <laughs> yes. Okay, so there's a white and yellow. There's what they look like when they grow. And I just want to show you, for those of you that never grew this before, or I know most people come are gardeners, but if you don't know this already, um, there's male and female plants on most squash. They're not self-pollinating plants. So technically, you will know, you'll see the females. The males will come out first. They're just flowers attached to the stem. The female will have that little section and then the flower attached to that. When it gets pollinated, and if it doesn't get pollinated, that squash will never grow. So that's why a lot of people kind of like actually self-pollinate things. Like they take Q-tips and, um, and do it. I'm Actually, I'm working with that too. Yeah, the zucchini flour, you can dip them in light light batter and fry them too. Or stuff them, I heard. I never ate the, the flowers yet, the pigeon lady, but I do understand they're very good. Yeah, they taste really good. Somebody else said that too. Drop, was that you? Probably it would slice them, dab with olive oil and salt and pepper with garlic and air fry them. Yep, that would be good too, Drop. That would be good recipes and that would be a healthy recipe. But, um, and there you go, you can just... Cut it all up and uh, put some olive oil and some basil and whatever you want. Um, I need to do the flowers. I will try flowers on it because most of the flowers on squash, are, they're edible. I've never done it yet, but it kind of sounds good. Or to stuff them. And I heard that they tasted good. Or cut up the squash and like I said, a little olive oil, little spices, a um, little basil, whatever. Throw it all in the oven and bake it like that. Um, you can eat them... Uh, you don't have to cook them. Oh, thanks very much, Eve. Thank you very much for the donation to my channel. Thank you so much, Eve. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I think I'm doing this one maybe next. I like this idea to slice them in half, uh, clean it out a little bit, the seeds, stuff them with some meat and, and sprinkle some cheese and um, just bake them like that. Um, I think in, in a cast iron pan so that now you got the iron too. So you're going to get the iron, uh, you know, from the pan, which a lot of people don't know that. If you cook, I cook with iron all the time. I cook with cast iron because cast iron, I have a grill that's cast iron. I have pans of crust iron. It's very healthy cooking in that because you're getting the iron from the pan. Um, if you don't know that. So this is the next recipe. I think I want to cook it something like that. Uh, next, next one. Uh, there's one like, then, then there's this, the risotto, um, you know, spinach risotto stuffed in it. Not spinach. Yeah, spinach risotto. 
which I love risotto. Not everybody does. I love spinach risotto in it. Um, and then there's these ones. I think these look a, a cute. You, nope, never eaten patty pan. You, they're cool though. You're gonna like it. Drop honestly. I think you'd you'd enjoy it. So it's worth growing, adding to your list. You make eggplant like that, yeah? You actually could. They're kind of soggy, so I don't know if eggplant is a little more firmer. You kind of add salt to it, and this I think might fall apart a little more easier than eggplant cooking it like a lasagna. But they do have a they do have a bake. I saw a picture of it. You can actually take slices of this and make it like kind of a lasagna, like you're laying with sauce and cheese on it. You could probably make that with it. Basil will sweeten it up, yeah. Um, it, that's mine. These are my plants right there. So I'm proud to show you my plants there, Mike. I know the other people already saw it, but uh, that is my potty pan squash right here. I, I think they're so cute. I got I used two, I had two, and the bigger one and a smaller one I left for another meal. So I'm thinking if I I think I'm gonna wait and have three. And I'm going to do stuff them or slice them in half and put them in the pan next. Um, I, I just love them. And they, I think, I don't know how long they store for because I really didn't store them that long. But normally squash can be stored. I was listening to Howie. I don't think Howie's still here. But um, Howie was telling me he had a spaghetti squash and he stored it in like room temperature for a year. Plus cast iron has a more even heat. Um... He, he took the potty pants or the spaghetti squash and he stored it for a, a year in a it has to be in a good environment it has to be in like a room temperature environment um and he had it for a whole year so i don't know about this squash is that a winter squash no is that a winter squash i don't know if it's a winter squash i guess i should let me see if potty pans a winter squash i have no idea uh let's see i would think it is most squash are but let's see I'm going to, is, um, uh, all it gave me was uh, the benefits with a high water content like all other vegetables in gourd family. It's in the gourd family. Patty pan squash is, uh, yeah, uh, from winter squash. Patty pan is, ugh, Wait a minute, I just lost the darn thing. I dropped it off. It looks like it is. Um, the way I Googled it, it looks like it is. I gotta do it again. I kind of lost it. I hit the button and I lost it. Patty Pan Winter Squash, let's see. I think it is. Is Patty Pan Squash a summer or winter squash? Now we're gonna find out. Summer squash are squashes that are harvested when immature while the rind is still tender and edible. Nearly all summer squashes are varieties of... Um, no, no to be confused, not to be confused with kusha, a type of winter squash, potty pan. So it looks like the, it's, I don't know, it's a little confusing. It, I think it's a summer squash because you're picking it not fully developed. That's what the only thing is. If you wait till the winter, it'll be overgrown. So I guess they consider that a summer squash. But I think it grow be grown later. All right. No problem, Eve. Thank you so much, doll. Yeah, it does. I was just showing that. Yeah, it's a summer squash. That's what, what I, they, they're calling it. But the only difference is they're calling it summer squash is because you're eating it tender and you're not waiting till it's fully developed. So technically, if you did that to a lot of squashes, you would have the same thing. That's the definition of it's you're eating it while it's not fully developed. So that's why it's called a summer squash. But technically, you can still probably grow it in the winter time. You don't have to wait till the winter. I could probably start. Well, it's ready now. I probably could do do another load. You already read it out as a summer squash. Yeah, yeah. It's, but I'm just saying it's, it, I did um, drop, drop. I'm just saying that it's because it's cook immature. Yeah, if you drop a pumpkin off a tall building, what do you get? Squash, David. 
Ah, you're so funny. You are so funny. All right, so anyways, let's go back to uh, what else do I got here? Because I have pictures of uh, the way Mike does it in p -mail that I was showing earlier. There it is, Mike. Does it look anything like that? The one, the way you eat it? I think it is. That's the one you told me about, but I really didn't. I don't love pea meal, so I didn't want to put it on it. But uh, is it pea meal? Yeah, it's, isn't that what it, you said? Don't you love me? <laughs> uh, everybody loves David. Don't worry. You want me to do your song again? I don't know if you're near the computer, Mike, but that's. I'm leaving the picture up to see what you, you think. I think that's what you're talking about. Hello, Mimi's Queen. Hello. Welcome to my live stream. Thank you for coming. Thank you, guys. 14, 24 thumbs up. That's awesome. Yeah, but they say to put it on a paper towel, it gets soggy. It looks like it is on a paper towel, Mike. Look at the picture. They look like it's it's put in a female. Then it's, yeah, it looks, you never show plants of rice. Because <laughs> I can't grow rice right now. If I, if I grew rice, then I would show you rice. You're so funny. If I grew rice, um, I should. I have swamp land. Maybe a little bit of the watery part would grow rice for me. Never even thought about growing rice. There's a new one. I think you need a lot of rain for rice. Uh... You you can at least show you can at least show bulls <laughs> bulls right uh, makes sense right yeah you set them on a cookie sh cooling rack and they will stay crisp and the oil will drip below yep okay I've I've seen rice fields in uh, oh you have oh that's interesting. I don't know if I ever want to grow rice because rice is like a dime a dozen. You can get it. Here's another one I like. I like it in, done in a cold salad, like with pasta. Uh, there's you don't have to cook the patty pan squash, so everything is pasta squash. I'm trying to look at all what's in there. It looks like baby zucchini in here too. It looks like baby zucchinis in here. Look, looks good. Like a, a like for the summer, like a nice light salad would be good with oil and vinegar what do you think of this one uh, Mike you like that just showing you there is tons and tons of recipes for patty pan squash I could go on and on and on about it when I started looking for this live stream I was like oh my god that looks yummy and I could do that and that and that so it's got tons making me hungry again I know that's why I'm here to make you hungry um, and there's the green ones and there's the seed part I like showing. The, well, which one do you like? Okay, let me go over there. You guys jump out. Which, there is so many. I'm going to go back here. Passion, does any of this make you hungry? What, tell me, it, you put a one if you like it or whatever. You like this one. I'm going to go over the, the dishes. Anybody like that idea? I, I like it. Does anybody like a stuffed potty pan? Would you think that would be cool for a dinner? And actually, like, for guests to make it look so fancy. It looks so fancy. So people coming over, you put that on the plate. Oh, you don't like it? Uh, I'm going to read the fridge. You're so funny. Mike, you don't like this one, no? I think you're saying no. Is that a two, meaning no? I think you don't like this one. I, I think it's kind of cool. Mm. All right, the texture. I forgot about that. Okay, so you don't like rice. All right. Um, let's find some other dishes I did. Well, this is simple. That's keeping it simple. That has no cornmeal on it. It's just grilled on the... I never thought about it. That would be cool. That's grilled on a barbecue. So you could actually slice it and grill on a barbecue. Would you like that one? Grilled on the barbecue, you'll have that smoky kind of taste on it. Okay, you like that one. All right. That's for everybody. Um, I'm just asking. Now, Mike's not going to like that one. Oh, no, you might like that one. That's meat. That's meat and peas. 
I don't know. It looks like some cheese in it, though. It looks like feta cheese. I don't know what that is, but that's not rice. You like this one, Mike? Okay, you like that one. Let's see. That's where everybody can tell. All right. That's not what I want. I don't know where the food... What about this one? Would you eat it like that? Like as a side dish. It looks like it has basil, which would turn it sweet. Green onions. You can definitely see the seasoning salt on it. You like this one? You guys can put one if you like it. I Mushroom rice corn. Oh, you like it? Mushroom rice corn? Yeah, that would be good. Mushroom rice corn. Mushroom. Yep, I like it. See, that would be nice and healthy. Uh, um, is that a yes? I think you like this one, Mike. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Eve likes it. Now, this is another one I want to do. <clears throat> I like this idea. I think this is kind of a hamburger stuffing with... Um, you can tell... Actually, it's baked with the stuffing, hamburger stuffing... Then taking it out and topping it with cheese and green onions. Um, and then you could probably put it back just in the broiler to melt the cheese. That would be That's the one I want to make. That's the one, not the stuffed one. I want this one next. Where I make some kind of hamburger dressing in it um, and shove it on. That's what I want. I want to try that one, see if that's any good. What about the risotto? Oh, you don't like rice. You're not going to like this one. I like it. But if you don't like rice, you'll definitely not like that one. What about this one? This looks good. With a tomato-based sauce. Uh, that might have rice in it, though, so you won't like it. I don't know if it does. I don't know if it has right. You can't tell. It looks like that might be cheese. One and a half. This one is one and a half? Oh, you like the stuffed one? As long as it doesn't have rice in it and you stuff it, um, it looks adorable. It looks cool with the tomato sauce. Actually, the tomato sauce would be another thing that would take, make that taste delicious. Tomato sauce, yeah. Again, that's mine. All right, and I think the last one's seeds. Nope, that's the frying one. I know you'd like that one. <clears throat> <laughs> I like rice. I I like rice. Yeah, you like that one for sure. Okay, I like rice. That one you I think you already marked. You like that salad one already. I did that one already. I think. I like this idea. definitely like this one to have it as a nice pasta salad um, with the Greek dressing with feta poured over top of it and it looks like it's got dill on it too yeah looks good um, this one I don't know why this looks like pancakes to me but I think it's just fried up and then they put sour cream and onion on it as a sauce no nah, use Italian sausage That's what, oh, God, thank you for that visualization. Bash it. Oh, now, if I don't eat rice, it's because of you, Bash it. <laughs> You're making me laugh. Oh, great. Now I'm going to visualize maggots in my, my meal. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 and oh, look what you did to me. <laughs> Uh, I think the, the last one, yeah, and the seeds. What else are we talking? We're talking about what is that? Let's see. Oh yeah, Hub Hubbard squash, another one that I like to grow. I'm talking about Hubbard squash. Look how big that is. I I gotta try growing it at least once. Oh puke. <laughs> And those are dead. Ugh. They're actually being supposed to be. 
it's supposed to be good, actually. Um, maggots are supposed to be very health, healthy and high in protein. If you didn't have anything else to eat, they're supposed to be very good for you. Seriously. They're, it's, it's healthy to eat them. Oh, jambalaya is so good with rice. Mm. Jambalaya is very good. What about this? Do you guys, does that interest you at all? Hey. Bill, Bill, Bill. I can't, see, I can't forget your name now. Newfound, because Bill, ever since Pasha said, Bill, Bill, Bill. I, I It's in my brain now. So I'm going to go, Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill, Bill, Bill. Newfound drone projections in the channel. Bill, Bill, Bill. Hi, Bill. I've seen a movie in which he was eating. Maggots are, if you had nothing to eat, they're very healthy for you. It sounds gross, but it's supposed to be healthy for you. Um, it's Bill, Bill, Bill. Yeah, it is. We're all good, I think. We're just talking about the potty pan squash. Have you ever heard of it before? Um, what about this dish, Mike? Does this interest you? Anybody? You guys like the one of this where it's stuffed? Yeah, protein. Uh, maggots are protein. They are gross, but I guess if you're extremely hungry and you needed to survive, you would eat them. I know, but passion, you would eat things if you had to survive. I don't think I, I, I don't know. I think I'd want to throw up too, but I get it. Not really, but I'd try it. The smell though. Yeah, no, you don't have to eat them. Like take them out, put them somewhere else. Gag is right. <laughs> Uh. Oh, so not really, but I would try it. So you, you would try this, but you know it's not your your top thing. Okay, I'm just gonna leave my uh, um, my thumbnail on because that's what our big discussion was today. It was a lot of fun. Um. Oh yeah, and I've. Hey, did you were you here? Did I show you the gourd? Who didn't see the gourd? I'm kind of really proud of that. Um. Here you go, maggot. Ugh, that's good. They're not going to want to eat it. The drop. <laughs> it would have to be... Uh, okay, I got to go. Okay, see you later, Miss Southern Belle. Have a good one. It would have to be mind over matter in order to resort to that. But I'm not sure my mind would allow me to think it is anything but gross. <laughs> yeah. That's probably true. That is probably true. Have a good day, Miss Southern Belle. Um... I gotta get my dishes done after I was looking at all those stuff. So, uh, oh yeah, that's what I, I I'm kind of like proud of this one. That's it. See, that's my gourd, Mike. I don't think you were here when I was showing it, or were you? That's uh, how my gourd's doing. It looked like this when we did the arch. Um, and that's for you, Bill. See, that's what the gourd looks like. <clears throat> it took four plants to do that. Um, I would have to knock them all over the head to knock them. Oh, I can't imagine eating something. Yet. Yeah, you'd have to kill them all first before you eat them. Hey, Dwayne. Hello. Welcome. So that's what it looks like. And it's thicker than I now. Knocking the maggots over the head. <laughs> Gross. Um, then... That's what they look like now. Well, you fixed it? No. No, the camera doesn't work on it. I have to take it in. We're talking about my camera still doesn't work on the computer I'm I'm doing this OBS on. I have to take it in to get fixed because <clears throat> I can't do the live stream. I hope it, it it's supposed to be bottleneck, so I want it to be bigger than that. Oh, thanks. Hi, Backyard Science. I want it to be bigger... Like, I, I want the top to be small and big, so I don't know. Uh, gross. Crab, so one day, I'm loaded a platter with, with dog poop, walked up with the platter, said, crap, ugh, ugh. oh, David, that's, <laughs> that is gross, gross. <laughs> uh, you're going to oot a 
Mike. <laughs> They're both gross fashions. <laughs> Mike is ooh and David is ooh. <laughs> Well, we made you lose weight. We won't eat anymore. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I hate to tell you, Passion, we blame the maggots on you. You started that conversation that went downhill. I'm just saying. <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were enjoying our food, and then you kind of said maggots, and that's what brought it all downhill. Ah, oh, that's funny. All right. See you later, Drop. Thanks for coming. Have a good one. Yeah, so I, I hate to say it, Pasha, but we were not being gross until you brought out the maggot part of it. <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> uh, and now I don't even know if I can get that out of my head. My bad. It is true, though. whole reason I can't eat, right? But it's making me laugh. It's bad because now I, if I don't get that out of my head, I'm going to think like you and not want rice. So I got to get it out of my head. I got it, like, my brain, good thing I don't have a, a long-term memory so that it'll get out of there and I can eat rice again. Ugh, oh, that's funny. So no more rice is not nice. <laughs> no, I'm sure I'll eat rice again. You're gross. You guys are, you're gross. <laughs> I know. I just, I'm saying you guys you guys are gross. Gross, gross, gross. Uh, let's go back to patty pan. At least it doesn't look like anything, but it looks nice. They're not getting into rice again. What else should I talk about? Oh, yeah, we had these pictures. What else I got down here? Oh, yeah, that's um, the next one I'm growing. It's called a buttercup squash. They're really tiny, the plants right now. I'm, I've, I've been doing a video on it, but uh, it's got a long way to go. Long way to go. Mike, have you ever had a buttercup squash? Anybody? Making you laugh is our favorite hobby. Um, have, has anybody ever had a bug? They look funny. Oh, this, oh, the potty pants squash, they're good. You, you should have been here. No, nope, never. Anybody have a, a buttercup squash? You, are they spicy? That's what I'm growing this year. My next uh, one. Right now, the potty pans are all coming in, um, growing nicely. And this is. The buttercup. Hello, happy Thursday to you, Kathleen. So, what, yeah, what do they taste like? And um, that's what I'm growing. What else do I got on this picture here? Yeah, we're, um, I never ate it and gave it to my sister. I'm not, um, not the one to eat the kind of, kind of thing. Did she like it? Well, anyways, I, I'm going to grow, I might do butternut squash just to grow it. I know what it tastes like. I've had it before and it's not, it's a good winter squash. Um, there's my, let's go over the pictures here fast to put my thumbnail back on, but there's my trellis. There's how the gourds are doing. Oh, she liked them. I think they're spicy, but I don't know that. And there's how my gourds are doing now on the vine. Uh, let's go over here. What did I put up here? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, we're talking about what I want to grow next year. Um, oh, okay, no problem. All right, no problem there, Bill. And we have, that's the one I want. I'm growing buttercup squash, which I got some... Um, Hoping I'm not too late about my cucumbers growing in. And right, so then we got just 
doing a little refresh of all the stuff we've talking about. So like, let's see. Hmm. Oh, you're still out there, eh, MT? Hmm, what's next here? What do we got up here? Oh. that for a while because I'm going to get off in a little bit. Hey. All right. So I hope you guys try that. Try growing it. It's a good squash to grow. I enjoyed it. It looks good. It's growing nice as long as you keep it clean and get all the moisture off of it. So far I don't have any cross on my fingers, any beetles because once the moisture gets in and it gets the fungus or the beetles, uh, not nice. My Backyard Science, are you still out there? Oh, she's probably on a break, she said, didn't she? Let's see what else I can find on it. Um, well, I see you can get them somewhere. I like the yellow one. Oh, what does it say? Try color, but I didn't know you could do this. It says try color patty pan squash some so it has all three of them on here um i don't never heard of renee's garden so i guess these are seeds you can buy um let's see what else i got it's kind of cool because i never had access to a patty pan in the states i, I would have took them from the states but uh i wouldn't mind getting the yellow ones to grow them maybe Oh, not, I, I don't know. I think I was asking if you ever grew these before. Have you grown patty pan squash before? Oh, and, and is there any pictures? Anybody want to send me some pictures in before I get off? I'm in here for a couple minutes, but uh, once again, I have no idea how long I've been on, but I've been enjoying this live stream. It looks like I've been on for at least an hour. I think I started at 11 o'clock. I've not grown the squash, no. Does it interest you to grow this kind at all? Are you, um, cause it's a really cool, like I said, it's a really cool squash and there's tons of recipes to do with this squash that I'm really impressed that I'm really happy I grew it. Very, very happy. Um, I love spaghetti squash, but I've grown that several times. So um, I'm happy I got a different chance to try something different. And then uh, I get the buttercup squash, and then maybe uh, it'll be two more squashes next year I want to try, two different kinds. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's a really nice, it's not. It's a very light-tasting squash, and all the recipes you can do is great. Oh, thanks, Pasha. Uh, maybe next summer, I think it's too late. Yeah, it probably is. Hi, David. Where the heck you been hiding? Um, hello there. It's good to see you. Uh, maybe next, yeah, I got, I'm going to write a list of things I want to grow next year too. And I, like I said, I might grow, I actually might, um, buy the fall, I'm going to buy a butternut squash and then I'm going to take the seeds and see if I can grow them. So I'll try to grow butternut squash next year and maybe another squash, um, Hoover, another squashes that I've never grown before is what I kind of want to, just a couple. I only have so much space for squash. So definitely, um. Yeah, I do. My stomach bugged me yesterday, uh, last night, and then I didn't come back because it was bugging me, but uh, I feel much better. Thanks for asking, David. I hope you're doing well, too. Much better. I actually can have a cup of coffee, and I don't feel too bad having it. So um, I'm glad about that. Glad to. My stomach feels much better.
That's exactly, yep, yeah, this year was a try, yep. Yeah. It's cool. Passion, you have a huge yard. Um, if I had your yard, honestly, I'd be, I know you're busy with that, but I would extend it a bit. I would do more uh, garden beds. We love, yeah, I, I would, this is what I would do. Like, you guys should, um, it's, I'm not telling you what to do. Grow things that you like, and the next year, keep them on the list to, to grow things. But always add something new is kind of fun. Like, if you like, I don't know, um, if you want strawberries, then grow strawberries. That's a perennial. Take some perennials and keep growing them in a, in a, a raised bed. I have a bunch of strawberries. But um, every year, add something new you never had before. It is. It doesn't look small. My my yard feels smaller than yours, Passion. Um, is it is it mine bigger or smaller? Because my yard's not that big. But I do, we actually have to um, fix one of the beds. The largest bed has fall, fallen down. So I have to come back and next year we're going to collapse it and take it all apart and redo it. The one that's like 20 some odd feet by two and a half feet is falling apart. So uh, I have to pull everything out, transplant all my perennials in the behind the fence and then replant them back up when we redo the design another um, garden bed. But if I have a chance, I might actually do some raised garden beds in other areas uh, to give it a shot. Because I really am liking how things are growing in my, my raised beds. They do really well. Like the, the certain things. The onions, I think why the onions is not, aren't doing as well and some of the stuff isn't because it's dropping. As it's starting to collapse... It's bowing out at the center of that big long one, and it's uh, dropping the dirt. So I don't think it's set, settled very good for gardening too much. Uh, the the area that my garden is is large part of my yard. Oh yeah. Well, I'm sure you know. Like you said, if you can design things um, in there, right, or even have things growing vertically, you can get a lot of stuff. Like I'm gonna. Uh, that's I started doing that. I, that's why I have stuff behind my fence so I can grow things vertically. Um, and, and now you can grow more stuff. If you grow vertically along your fence and then on the front level off plants, something the tallest to the smallest, just like flower beds, you could probably do a lot of stuff. Because when I think about how I got one set, I have the patty band squash at the back. Now I'm growing cucumbers to the side of it. And I got the butternut the buttercup squash growing to the front of it. So by the time that starts to um, have less and less um, potty pan squash, now the second will be the front and then it'll start growing up bigger. I actually do that. That's another thing I've been doing. As things die out, go plant something else in that same area. I forget. There's a name what it's called, but it's there's a name of type of gardening it is, what they do, where, they, where things like if radishes die out, then you go replant it with something else. And then when something else grows out, the onions grow, you put something else there. Um, and you, you, you never let it go. You always add something new to it. But apparently you're not supposed to put a root vegetable in the same spot as another root vegetable. Yeah, pumpkin takes a lot of room. Absolutely. I did it just to grow and say I did it. But um, I don't know if I'd grow pumpkin because it takes so much room. Uh, these... these um, they take a little bit of space, um, and actually, Mike, I was going to tell you this. I remember you told me when you saw the video that you said I planted them kind of too close. But actually, if I showed you a picture, they're doing quite happy. There was enough space that they're all they they do they're doing really well. They're all like kind of together in one big bush, but they're all happy growing. There's nothing where they're over they're over squishing each other in. They're all doing really well. All the plants so. Um, I didn't do too bad at the estimate of putting them, the, the distance I put them seemed to work fine for me because the plants are doing really well. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I didn't disagree with you because I didn't never grow them before. And when I started growing them, in all honesty, Mike, I went, oh, he's right. They're too close. Am I going to move them? Because maybe I planted them too close to each other. But then the more I let them go, the more I went, okay, well, I'll show, I'll show you a picture maybe. Um, I don't know if I have one to show you that they really didn't over squish each other, which I thought I agreed with you. I thought they might, but um, surprisingly, they did it. See if I can find a picture to show you what I'm talking about. I know I took one because I like taking updates to show you guys. And then at the end of the um, year in September, October, I'll put all these pictures together and show you everything. But uh, let's see if I can find it. 
I know I took it. I want. Oh, here you go, Mike. This is. Um, I think this is it. Let's see if it's it, and then I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you how it, it, they look. They're bigger than this, but they seem to be happy. They're not like over squishing each other, which surprised me. I thought they would too, and I almost thought about moving them because of that. But then I let them go, and uh, they seem to be okay. This. They're bigger than this, but this is at least an idea of showing you. They ended up being like one bush together. And they look okay. They're like almost protecting each other. Uh, what number is that? I gotta see. Um, July 12th, too. All right. There it is. They're taller than this now, but because um, that was done on July 12th and we're the 23rd, so that's what. 11 days, they're bigger. So in 11 days, they'd grow quite a bit. Okay, so let's... So you get at least an idea what I'm talking about. Um, the spacing wasn't bad for me. And then it doesn't take up as much in my garden. And I could grow other things with it. In front of it and the side of it. See? There you go. They all they're, It's bigger than this, but you get the idea that they all connected and they did okay. They're not like smothering each other. They're they're happy together like there you go but that's a smaller version they're even bigger than that all right yeah there it is you well you can train them to, to spread away from your stuff anyways that's what I do passion actually I change I train a lot of this stuff actually um, the gourd plant didn't sit there. It goes all over the place. I actually, every day, when the, the, the ends of the gourd plant strays out, I put it back on the, the trellis. So you could do that. You could actually train pumpkins to grow in the direction you want if you put them that way. Uh, my whole yard, uh, so my next door neighbor kids are forced to stop walking through it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's kind of what it looks like. That'll stop them, yeah. Ah, no problem. I don't think I'm going to be on too much longer. I have plans. i got to do some dishes. Um, and i got to go outside and check on my garden. And, yep. Blah, blah, blah. All this daily stuff every day you do. But... I just saw the come on. I don't even know what I'm going to talk about. If I come back tomorrow or the next day, try to figure out what's a good one. Um, it's, oh, it's raining there? It was supposed to rain. I didn't get rain. I, it's supposed to, it said that it was going to rain for the next several days. Unless it rained at night. Um... I didn't get any rain. A man doing dishes, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, well, no one said the woman has to do the dishes. Listen, look at it, he's like excited. <laughs> I have no problem with men doing dishes. And matter of fact, they should. I, I But, you know, I, I kind of compromise. How's that? Sometimes you compromise in things that you don't mind doing. Um, and other things I don't like doing, somebody else will do. But if I don't want to do the dishes, yeah. Well, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I do the, most of the dishes, but um, I'm going to say he does other things that I don't want to do. So I don't cut the grass. He cuts the grass, so it works out all right. And if I really want him to do the dishes, I'd say, um, can you do the dishes? I've done it enough. Well, you're very spoiled there, Lisa. Just want to tell you, he works full time, and he's doing the dishes, and he's cooking you dinner. You are a spoiled young lady. That's what I'll say. Uh, but a good. But you're good. You're lucky. You're lucky. You are very lucky. A lot of men don't like to cook or whatever or whatever. My husband cooks too, though. But um, yeah. No. Oh wait, I gotta feed her. 
Talk to you guys. Acts of service is his love language, so that is also how he shows it. I think it's awesome. It is a nice thing. I, I think it's great when when uh, men cook, but I think that's lucky because a lot of times men don't cook. I like it when men's cook. I think it's awesome, honestly. And say hi to your brother for me there, Kathleen. Say hi to your brother for me. We haven't talked. I know he, he was looking for you a while back. Um, I do the dishes in. Yeah, it works. I'm not knocking anything. Whatever. If anybody likes to cook, then the one that likes to cook, cooks. And doing dishes, whatever. It works. Oh, it says I'm on two hours. Wow. That's cool. I Yeah, don't forget. I'm repeating it again. But say I say hello to your brother there, Kathleen, if you, you got it. Um, it's cool. Whew. Stay all day. Uh, no, not staying all day. You got a good, you got a keeper. I'm really, you are spoiled, but I don't mean that in a bad way. I, I like it. I don't mean that in a bad way, Lisa. I think that it's nice with all the stuff I see lately. And I'm not doing a 10 hour live stream. I cook, push buttons, waits for a long a thing. He <laughs> microwaves. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of hard cooking there, MT. <laughs> um anyways yeah passion i think there's nothing wrong i would rather have a man treat a lady nice so hey i'm all for it i think it's great i think absolutely great he is the polar opposite of my ex i think it's great that he's he does that for you and if he likes doing it even better cool kathleen we are definitely delayed um but i, I good for you what's he cooking for supper tonight what are you having? Polar opposite of my ex. I love that he treats you nice, Passion. Don't get me wrong. I mean, when I, I don't mean that in a mean way to say you're spoiled because a lot of men don't do that for women. So um, I think it's he's a good guy. He's a keeper. I'm growing up to be a chauvinist. Um, well, you're not. No wonder why you don't have a girlfriend is what I'll say on that one. He does. He doesn't do, do well having nothing to do. He likes to keep busy. Well, I think it's great. I think that uh, if he likes doing that, and, and you're a nice lady anyways, Lisa. I'm sure, yeah, you know, this is what I do. I actually, if somebody makes dinner or something that I'm not cooking, I always thank them very much, and I appreciate the break, and it's nice for, like, when my mom cooks, um, I'm not really fussy. Like, they, they make dinner. I don't go knock them. I just, if they ask me if I like it or not, I'll, I'll say that, but... Otherwise, I, I always say thank you very much for making dinner. And that's for both of them. Whoever makes dinner. My husband makes dinner or I make dinner. We all take turns. Yum. Hooli, who chicken, and pokey tuna. Wow. 
Yeah, and I know he sounds like he's an awesome cook, your brother, Kathleen. Awesome. I think there's more to life than having a woman with baby oil and breakfast in bed. I'm just telling you, David, there's more to life than just that. So maybe that could be an issue here just a little bit for you. All right, see you later, Kathleen. Have a good one. Be safe. I have to get a hold of you one day. I haven't talked to you for a long time. So maybe I'll get a hold of you later, Kathleen, um, on Facebook. This week or something, we'll, we'll talk if you're not doing nothing. Money, this money, that money. No, not everybody's about money. That's, it's more to life than about money. But you need money to survive, but it's more than enough about money. Money, money, money. Money, 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 money. Well, that's all you see? What, women like you just for money? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, that's, then you're, you're looking at the wrong women. Well, it's not just about money. We already know that, David. But you got to have money to live. Um, well, like I said, you got to have money to live. My, my philosophy is a little different. You need money to live. That's it. You need money to live, and it's not all about money. Now, yeah, you're trying too hard. That's not, I, I don't think, I don't think God has anything to do with the whole thing of why you don't have anybody or not. That's, David, you're trying too hard, and, and if it's supposed to happen, it'll happen. That's the way it is. When you try too hard, you don't get anything. And when you let it go, you might have somebody. Yeah, those are, yeah, absolutely, Passion. I hear that, a lot. I, I agree 100%. I don't think it's all, you need money to live, but that's, it, if, if if it's just about money, then that's not the right person for you. Um, you need to, like, I need money to survive and everything, but it's not, I never, you know what, when I saw passion, and that's for all of you, when I see, and all the stuff I told you I've been researching, when I see the way people act when they're rich, I would never want to be rich. I would I don't, I don't, I thought there's a point where I'd want money so I could help people out. And yes, I'd like money to help people out, but I don't ever want to be rich. Because look what rich does to you. Oh my God, most of these people who are rich are kind of turning evil. They're evil and they're not nice and they're not helping anybody but themselves. So if that's what money does for somebody and being wealthy, I never want to be wealthy. I will be happy doing what I, I'll be happy working for a living and working and doing what I got to do to, to live. I'm content with that. I don't think things should come to you for free because look what happens when it does. You have to, you work for your money. Uh, it, it's it. You don't, you don't, um, I mean, I, I, like I said, there's one time where all I wanted to do was have a lot of money, but not to be rich where I needed a house or materialistic items just to help others is what I wanted. We struggle with the money frequently. He works hard and we still struggle. The fact that he works hard, that is important, is important. Yep. Not what it makes. Yep. But it helps me to buy more. <laughs> we know Mike. <laughs> When it helps me to buy more lawnmowers, just the like. <laughs> um, well, I think it's funny. I want to be rich, man. No, nah, you don't. You don't want to be rich. It's not going to help you out. I would. I. I. Everybody that I see that's wealthy, the famous people, and all these people that have loads of money. There's not anyone that I think that's that good of a person. Like, I mean, there's some, but truly, are they good people? Um, no, this is a cover up. <laughs> That's what I've noticed. It's a cover up. 
It helps with rallies for the cooties. Well, I don't know. It's okay to have a little bit. And it's okay to buy toys, Mike, like a lawnmower. Uh, it's okay to treat yourself, too, if you have the money. But it's still, I, I don't know. I think it's, I don't care that to be rich. And if, like I said, if I had money, it would be to go to, to help people, not necessarily that I need more stuff. Yeah, being content alone is important too. Too many people aren't happy unless they are in a relationship, relying on other persons for their happiness, and that won't work. Yeah, that's true. You have to love yourself. That's true. They fall to the evil side too easily. Absolutely, Mike. That's it. Yeah, I don't want to go down. You're right. I was going down to the deep path, and I don't want to go there. But I'm just saying that that seems to happen. The money is... Well, that, they always used to say that money is the root of all evil. So I think it is. The more money you have, the more you get worse is what I see lately. And now I'm like to, to be content of what I have and, and live comfortably is I'm happy with that. You know, and he, like I said, even I suddenly came to a whole lot of money and made tons of money. I won't I won't move. I wouldn't I don't want anything. I want to to do things to help and. Whatever I like doing, growing things, all the stuff I like, you know, and feeding other people. Like when you grow stuff, like I said, I would love to have to grow um, open gardens and everyone help themselves if they help. They, I'm not going to grow things and work hard so that no one helps and they just take. You have to be part of learning and growing things. And I think that is what's really cool about taking kids and doing gardens. Rachel... Um, Rachel Nolan told me, I don't know if you're there, you guys, but I'm really happy if she does that. Rachel Nolan's a school teacher in New Orleans. And we we're talking, and she said, uh, she was talking to one of her other teacher friends, and they're thinking about when they go back doing a garden and getting the kids involved growing things. Uh, I said, that's what I wanted. I would love that. I hope you do it, and I hope you do a good job that other schools follow by you, the, what you're doing. I think it's going to be really cool. Maybe they get bored with their lives and don't have real friends. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't think I materialistic items, to a point it's fun and it makes you feel happy, but I don't think that's the ending result is 100% to feel happy because you get everything you want. Actually, sometimes it's more exciting to save your money and work hard to get what you want, and then you know you have value in it, that you're going to take care of it. That's what I think. Like, if there's something you you want, you don't have the money that you have to save for. Hey, hi, NDT Show. Welcome. I don't know. What do you think on that? Like, if, uh, and that's for you, all of you, Mike, Lisa, everybody. If you, there's an item, let's say, um, I don't know. Let's say it's a guy and he wants a lawnmower. I'm just making that up, Mike. Um, and you don't have the money right away, but you save to earn it. Are you not going to take care of that item that you saved and hard, work hard to, to buy it? It didn't just come. You had to work for your money, Mike. You didn't get it for free. So I'm just saying if you work and save for something like a child could, save for something they really want, instead of handing them that, that easy, make them earn it and save for it. And then when they get it, they're going to appreciate what they get. That's my thinking on it. I think that um, kids will take care of something that they had to work hard and save their money to get than just be handed to it. That is what I worked hard for all my life. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And But the, the thing is, you, you, it's a good thing. I think it's a good feeling to, like, if I go buy something and I say, okay, well, I'm going to buy it after I save this much money, and then I get it. That is why I'm here. That is why I am where I am. Yeah, absolutely. You didn't get it for free. You had to work hard for it. You didn't come from your family or just get tons of money. I, I believe the kids should work for their money. I don't think that they should get it for free. You can help them a lot, help them, but the fact of doing it on your own and earning it yourself is a much better feeling. Yeah, I think so. They would appreciate it and take more care of it. Absolutely. I do. I think that um, I've got to give an example of what I, uh, what I got myself. I had to think of like a craft item or something that I really wanted, and I had to save to get it. And then when I got it, um, I knew how much it cost and how hard I had to work for it that there's no way I want to jump and buy another one. So um, like a computer, um, I, I, I had to work to buy the computer 
and now the camera's gone, but now at least I got the warranty on it. And the thing is, I, I want to take care of this stuff. It costs me enough money to buy a computer or a laptop that I don't want to go get another one in a couple months. I want this to last. So, of course, I'm going to take care of it because I had to save to buy it. And, you know, and, and that's another thing. I don't, I don't ever buy something on credit. You either have the money or don't buy it. That's my thinking. You don't go get yourself in debt upon debt upon debt. You, you have the money, you earned it, you saved it, and now you can buy it. Go buying it on a credit card and not having the money to pay for it, um, that's not good either. That's what gets you in, in the hole of buying things. Yeah, yep, I agree with you. I Passion, 100%. Daughter is enrolling in college. She's paying for it herself. She will take it more. Yep, when it's her money, she's using rather than... Yep, I agree. If not, no buy. Yeah, absolutely, you guys. Like, I, we're on the same thing. That's So that's what kids should be aware of. You know what? Kids should not be handed things. I am not... You know that I'm the world of protecting kids, and I, I keep saying that. But I also have rules of what I believe in about raising a child, and one of them is... I don't want to hand things too easy to a child. Uh, they need to earn it. I don't think they should be handed money just for nothing. If you start out with them knowing, like when they're little, they do chores or whatever it is, and you give them an allowance, that's kind of like learning for the real world. You're going to have to go work, do your job right, and then you get paid for it. So kind of you're already starting that philosophy when you're teaching somebody young that they need to work in order to get it. That is life. And I don't think, I don't think God made it that you want it. You're supposed to work. I mean, you're supposed to, that's, it's part of life. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. Cause then you feel so good that when you get that paycheck that you worked for it, you're, you're so happy that you got the paycheck, you know, and you're so happy that what you bought, you're not in debt to buy. You got it. You get like, it's in it. And the, the fact that I always found it exciting more than having something just bought the fact that if I had to save for it made me feel better about myself. Yeah, it took me this week's, yep, yeah, and I got it, and I paid cash, and it's mine. Like the same, certain things, my house is mine because I worked hard, I paid it off, and, and it feels great that I can say I own it because I worked hard to do it, and I paid it off. Um, um, not as much, yeah. They, technically, uh, MT, I know you're in the States, but apparently in Canada... It's against, they're not taking cash because of all this stuff going on. Nathan, your garden with your dad looks so good. Cool. Good for you, Nathan. None of the kids got their driver's license at 16. They needed to have a job to help pay for their parts of the insurance. I, I agree 100%, Lisa. Absolutely passionate. I think it is. Um, and as empty as far as the money part. Um, as far as the money, um, they're, they're not taking it, but technically it's a law that they have to take it. There's nowhere in Canada that you're not allowed to take cash, but they're trying to avoid taking cash because money is the most filthiest thing and, and it takes so many diseases. Uh, our money's, they're running out of change. Well, the, oh yeah, I know why though. I think, um, there's things empty. Let's just say that, um, through the investigating that I'm doing, your money's going to be changing and they're probably taking, as they see cash in, they're taking all the cash in and they're going to be, I think they're going to be implementing new money um, in the future. You're, that's what's going to happen. They're not, the banks are taking the change in, the money's going in and you, it's going to be a new form of cash later on in the future that that's why you're not seeing too much. I think the money's going to be changing. I'll put it this way. The money will be changing if Trump gets in which uh, in some ways I hope he does. My family's going to kill me for saying that, but um, the money's going to change in the future. I think it's going to be, your money's going to look differently. And that's probably why there's short of change because of that. Yeah, me too. I think that, um, 
Well, I'm just saying it's against the law to not take cash in here in Canada. You guys are in the States. I don't know what the law is there, but I understand through my husband that I don't know that for a fact, but it's against the law that they don't take money and they have to take cash. But uh, most of us don't do cash anyways. It's all filthy and you know that you can get all kinds, you can get sick from cash. It's dirty money. I mean, it's not healthy anyway, so I have no problem not using cash, but it does make it awkward about the change and all that. That's true. They are controlling about with a card. That's true, Mike. That that probably makes a lot of sense. When you use a card, they can see exactly what you're buying, and and that's in a selling point. That's probably absolutely 100% true, Mike. That doesn't surprise me. Yep. By well, you having access to a card um, and not money, they know exactly what you're buying for consumer side of it, and they know, okay, so if people are buying this, then they know that they're going to make more of it. And if you're not buying this, then they're going to make less of it. Yeah, I agree 100%, Mike. I'm, sh I'm sure that makes sense to me. Absolutely. It's a, it is it is kind of a control thing. It is. They know exactly what you're doing. And But right now, I don't really have a major problem with it. But Because it's still, it's, it's up to you whether you want to buy it or not. I should do a vid anything and show you it's wild all the, the Walmarts in my area refuse never thought it I see that um, checks again I don't know passion that's interesting but that's still paper right now the whole thing is it, it's paper and paper is contagious so I don't know I don't know if you'll ever see it again or not it's um, you know, I don't know. You might. You might see cash again. Because really, people could fight to say you want bills because Mike's actually right. If you use cash, then there's no way of telling you, well, they can see what's sold in a store, but they can't tell you what you're buying. They can't. By cash, there's no trace back to you. Yeah, that's all right. I wonder if more places will take checks. Um, yeah, it's interesting, all this stuff, for sure, guys. It's very interesting. All these uh, subjects are, are cool to talk about. Not help. Um, that's true. That benefit to debit or credit would be no comfort. That's absolutely true, Passion. So you see, got a point too. That's you know that I kind of like that idea that you kind of like you're playing two sides of this, and you're right, Passion. On that side, uh, actually, you'd save a lot of money. Yes, definite pros and cons. Absolutely. Um, I think that benefit to debit is. Or credit would be no comfort money. That is true. They would have to make a card. They would. If you're a crook, you're going to figure out how to way to get the money. But um, interesting thing. That controls counterfeit money. That's actually true on that side of it. Yeah. It's cool when you think about both sides of this. Both sides of the coin. It's kind of cool. You know, not only that, um, if you think about it, now you're just making cards and you're not making money so now now you're talking about money um exchange would save money you'd save money you wouldn't they wouldn't have to have a a place where you're gonna have to literally have money gold or all that stuff anymore you wouldn't have any have to do with that anymore you wouldn't have the mint where you're making coins and dollar bills and none of that but the bad part is that does give jobs to other people so you'd be taking away jobs again so so you get a bad point. Yeah, I guess that's true, yeah. Then kids growing up can't earn cash for working for their grandparents. 
or anything. No, but you can transfer money into a bank. You can transfer money into a bank and then they have a banking card. Technically. You know. Like if if the grandparents are going to give them, then you open a bank account. And they transfer $10 or whatever into their account. And then they have a card to get access to the money. They, you can still pay your, your, your children. Just transfer money to an account. It's just not hand money in cash. I don't know. They can learn to manage their own bank accounts and balance their account. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I can't, why, young kids can have a bank account. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't, I've started my kids, um, you can open bank accounts, not necessarily under a kid's name. You can put in trust to that child so they can have an account access to it. Yes. I did that for my kids. They had, when they were little, I would put money into them, uh, banking accounts and trust it to their name. And when they got older, I gave them the bank account. So yeah, you can do that. Lots of business like cash so they can hide their income to pay less taxes. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. People were doing under the counter stuff with cash. That, that that would definitely stop that. I don't know. I don't know what to say is which the best way. Just need a SSN number for them. No, you don't need a social security. Not here, Mike. You don't need a social security number for a bank account. They can have an account with a parent on it. Yeah. We have access to my son's even though it is his name. He has the responsibility of making sure he doesn't become overdrawn. Yeah. Yeah, my, I've done that since my kids were little. They had both had bank accounts. And uh, I think my grandkids have bank accounts. Older kids, so no birthday money for small. Yeah, no, they could still give it to them in a form of not cash. Like I said. You can give you can give uh, give them money cash. I don't know if it's the best thing. I'm not. I don't know. I don't know whether I agree with it or not. You can get birthday money, uh, birthday money for birthdays and different things. You just transfer the money into their bank account. What are we supposed to call the money, money tree then? <laughs> the money card. You can call it a money card. You don't have to call it a money tree, my MT. Uh, I don't know. It's just food for thought. I don't know whether having cash or not cash is a good thing. Uh, you will always have one side or the other. And I think that, I don't think that's a bad thing, okay? I think that we should all be able to have our own opinions of things. Once we all start totally agreeing, I mean, there's an opinion, but we still all can love and, and love each other and not get mad at each other. But you, you should be able to have a separate opinion, I think. I mean, I think it's only fair for uh, Lisa to think one way and I think another way and MT thinks another way. Um, I think, what is that, freedom of speech, whatever it is, you can have, but without fighting, with, because if, if I'm on the wrong track, maybe somebody has a different idea, and maybe that's the right track, who knows, but, you know, if you agree with money or whatever, you think it's a good idea, there's nothing wrong with that, that's an opinion, and maybe it is a good idea, and maybe the cards and not having money is another better idea, who knows, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well shoot I have to pull all my money trees <laughs> duct tape the new currency yeah that's it that's that's cool duct tape you never know that's funny <laughs> uh. you Wait, you disagree that's hate speech? No. No, I don't think I'm saying that. You disagree that's hate speech. You think that's hate speech to disagree? I'm confused. I think that people are entitled to their own opinion is what I'm trying to say. And whether we agree or all agree, don't agree. That, oh, that was a joke. Okay. <laughs> uh, you disagree that's hate speech. That's a joke. That was a joke. Okay, good. You, you had me. I'm wiping my head forehead now. I wasn't sure what you meant because I'm thinking, um, yeah, I think, you know what, I don't, I, I like to have a peaceful place. I like us to agree, but unfortunately, I don't know if it's always the best to always agree with each other because I don't know if that's makes sense. 
Um, I I don't know. I have a hard time with people. We all this. We all have our own opinions, and sometimes you get annoyed that they don't agree with you. But I don't think it's a bad thing to have a different opinion. I don't know. I I I think it would be kind of as someone said to me, or many, a boring world if we all thought identical. Yeah, yeah, I know. It is sad passion. It is. I don't I don't ever want to you get annoyed, but that doesn't mean when you disagree and it's a major fight, that's the wrong part. That's what I'm saying that that's wrong to do. Um to get so hurtful and upset that somebody didn't agree. We do it, but it, that's wrong. It's just you got to have a way of like saying, "Okay, that's your opinion and um I don't agree with your opinion, but uh, that's okay that's cool and, and not start a fight it's not a bad thing to have an opinion we all can agree to disagree you know what I'm yeah absolutely I do know what you mean and I think that's exactly what I'm thinking that, well that's what she's saying too though it's true it's caused lots of fights I've been involved with that where we you don't agree and you end up being a fight to it and it, you shouldn't get that upset about it you can just okay so you don't agree with my opinion that's okay uh, I don't want to get mad about it I just refuse to discuss major talks with friends where emotions get too involved. That makes sense, too. That makes sense, too, Lisa. Absolutely. If you know it's going to start a major fight, then there's no sense. Because you know what? You'd be instigating it by doing that. So if you know that someone's going to, it's going to cause a fight, and you know that, then it's not, why bother doing it? I, I If I say I hate Brussels sprouts, is that hate speech? No. Of course not. Of course not. We get it. It's a good conversation. I mean, somehow my conversations always go wild. We start out with potty pan squash, and now we're talking about money and talking about all kinds of things. But it's a very enjoyable conversation. I think it's very funny that potty pan squash was the subject and how we end up by the time I'm done. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Passion. Yeah. There's many issues of things if you don't deal with it exactly right. Uh, people get so upset, and sometimes the issue is not politics. The issue is something else hidden in the politics, which is, is wrong in itself. Like, you know, that's what I think. And it causes too much trouble, and people should wake up to think that's not the main issue. Of Politics is not the main issue of who you like or not to start a fight. Right there is an issue. You're already starting a fight over politics which that's not the main issue. Sometimes there's issues in there, like children, and it doesn't mean that one party is better than the other party. It means the main object is protecting kids, not whether one does it or one doesn't or whatever. That's not the goal at all. I mean, I don't like taking sides on, on politics either. Well, you too, NDT. I think I'm going to hit the road, Jack, too. Um, it's been a blast. Thank you for coming. I love the conversations. We will always start off with a subject, guys. It was patty pan squash, and if anybody ever wants to watch the beginning of this to know that I was dealing with patty pan squash, but after that, people send pictures, and we kind of go somewhere else to a different subject, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's a lot of fun. I have no problem with that. So have a great day today, everyone. Keep on. Absolutely, Mike. You too. Uh, maybe I'll come back tonight. We'll see. For those of you who want to come, um, maybe I'm going to do a stream here tonight. Um, I had a lot of fun with that, so I miss you guys. I miss Passion and Mike and all the, the main ones that like coming to talk. It was a lot of fun the other day, and you know I don't like StreamYards, but I do miss you guys. I think it's fun when you guys get on and talk. We all talk to each other. I think it's cool. Um, yeah, My Backyard Science. I, I, I'm, I don't know what subject I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm going to deal with some kind of garden thing, but uh, I thank you for joining me, all you guys. Um, I am off to go do some dishes and gardening and and so I, I want you guys, like Mike said, keep smiling, have a good day, positive thoughts, love and light, and keep safe, guys, till the next time I see you. Um, yeah, I'm going to, you guys can all talk and say goodbye to each other. I'm going to play my little, you know, upbeat song. That's what I'm going to do before I get off. Uh, but uh, I'm excited today. It was supposed to rain, and now I can go outside and check on my plants. I'm, I'm really, really excited. There's weird, weird things that excite me, but like we've been working on cleaning the garage and the garage is starting to get where I can walk in and it looks decent. Now we're going to paint it. Uh, all that stuff, that makes me feel good. It makes me happy when I take something that's a mess and clean it. 
Let's see the little things in life. Yeah. <laughs>